Hi everyone, and welcome to External Secrets Operator, the secrets management toolbox for self-sufficient teams. My name is Moritz Jona. I'm a senior software engineer at Form3 and one of the creators and maintainers of External Secrets Operator. I brought this talk to PlatformCon because I think secret management is a pretty important building block when creating a developer platform. And I think External Secrets Operator provides the right abstractions and flexibility to fit into your platform too. By the way, I'm available um, for a Q&A session, session later today in a platform con Slack channel, so feel free to swing by. This talk won't be a comparison with other tools in the space like Seal Secrets or Secrets Store uh, CSI Driver. I'll focus primarily on external secrets operator. By the way, I'll say the word secret a lot. Um, I'm sorry <laughs> if that annoys you. Um, also, I'll shorten external secrets operator to just ESO in some cases. Now let's take a quick look at the agenda for today. So first I'd like to um, say a couple of words about secret management, uh, what it is and why it is important. Um, and the kind of challenges you typically have and what solutions exist in that space. Then I wanna talk about um, how ESO integrates your secret management system into Kubernetes and why it's a great choice for GitOps. Finally, I'll present uh, two multi-tenant deployment scenarios um, to showcase the flexibility of ESO. So let's jump straight into it. Um, so first and foremost, what is secret management and why is it important? In your organization, there's some data that must be kept confidential. That could be, for instance, an API key for authenticating with an external service that you integrate with. Say you integrate with um, some payment provider, you need some authentication credentials to be able to talk to that provider and create a payment and execute the payment and so on and so forth. Um, other thing could be short-lived credentials that you issue to your developers so they can access a particular service like say AWS uh, console. Um, a different use case that I um, see in likely every company out there is that you have some sort of a private in-house certificate authority that provides the root trust for your platform. Now, secret management is a set of tools and processes to securely store, access, and manage the lifecycle of such credentials. These credentials are typically your crown jewels, or at least they provide access to your crown jewels. Um, so it's a rather important topic. Um, and wherever you store secrets or whenever your secrets are transmitted within your technical systems or within your organization, there's a risk of data leakage. And that could mean the end for a company. So I'd say it's a rather important um, topic, um, a rather important thing to get that sorted out properly and to avoid um, driving your business against the wall. So one typical challenge that you have um, with secret management is um, when you have like an enterprise setup or at least like a multi-team context um, where you, you know, every team runs in a slightly different direction. They use different tools, have different processes, and that basically results in a secret sprawl. So different tools, different management processes, like everything is like a little bit different in, in, in every corner. And that basically, um, makes you have a larger attack surface and more importantly, you lack um, control. So you really wanna have one central solution that stores your secrets securely, has a proper um, audit, audit lock implemented and uh, provides the access control that you need. Um, typical solutions in that place um, is HashiCorp Vault, which I think is like probably the most um, uh, most well-known solution out there. Uh, apart from that, you have GCP um, and AWS Secret Manager, where I'll primarily for storing application credentials or credentials for use um, of um, applications, so not humans. Um, apart from that, you have like other um, uh, SaaS solutions like Achilles, for instance, um, that provide us um, a hosted service for you. Now, let's switch over to how to integrate with, uh, how integrate your secret management system with Kubernetes. So let's just think we already have all that um, secret management um, stuff sorted out. And now we want to integrate it with Kubernetes. And you have a couple of options there. And again, I'll focus primarily on ESO today. Now, ESO was specifically designed around the secret resource. Um, why is secret? Well, this is a Kubernetes native way to deal with secrets. So you can use secrets as an image pool secret. You can uh, reference secrets from an ingress resource um, that contains a TLS service certificate or a private key. Uh, but most importantly, um, you wanna use secrets and um, mount them um, as file into a pod or um, consume secrets through environment variables from within your application container. 
Now, ESO um, pulls in the secret from the provider, AWS, uh, Secret Manager, HashiCorp Vault, you name it, uh, pulls in that secret and writes it as a secret resource uh, in Kubernetes. And internally, ESO does a polling and it regularly checks if the secret has updated or has changed. And then it pulls in the, the new secret and uh, writes it to the, uh, to the Kubernetes secret resource. So that change propagates as well. So this is useful for, um, for secret rotation, for instance. Now, ESO is an operator and you have to configure um, the operator and have to tell it like, which provider to use, um, how the secret should look like, what kind of secret you want to pull in. And ESO provides two abstractions um, for that. On the one end, you have a secret store resource, which represents the provider, and it um, connects information, what provider to use, um, what endpoint to connect with, and it uh, references authentication parameters, parameters that are used to authenticate with a particular provider. On the other hand, you have external secrets, uh, external secret resource um, that is an abstraction for the going to be created secret. So that contains information which secret should be pulled um, from the provider. Um, and it defines how the resulting secret should look like. So what's the, secret, the name of the secret that should be created? Um, what kinds of annotations or labels should it have? Um, you can use templating inside the external secret resource. And you also define um, how often um, ESO should check um, whether a secret has changed. Let's take a quick look about how this, these YAML resources look like. Again, on the right-hand side, we have a secret store, which represents the provider. Um, in this case, we have an, we use AWS as a provider. Um, uh, specifically, we use uh, the secret management, secret manager service um, in a particular region, and we use a service account, which is used for authentication. On the left-hand side, we have an external secret resource that references that particular secret store. And it defines that um, on an hourly basis, this is a refresh interval, on an hourly basis, um, ESO should pull uh, or check if a secret has changed. Then the desired secret um, should be named my-api-key. And the data property defines um, how the secret keys, so the the keys of the secret resource within Kubernetes um, should, should be named. So we have a secret key called my secret. Um, and the remote ref key defines what secret name um, the secret has on the provider side. So in AWS Secret Manager, you have a key um, or a secret with the name applications foo API key. And ESO pulls in that secret from the provider and creates a secret with the name my API key and sets the key of that secret, my secret, to the value um, of bespoke secret. So <laughs> that was a lot of secrets. Sorry for that. Um, I guess like you, you get it just from it. Um, so the, the important takeaway here is that we, like if we do GitOps, um, these would be the typical manifest that we would store um, in our Git repository. And the important uh, point here is um, that we store only references to secrets and not like encrypted blobs of a secret that you would do with the use of sealed secrets or SOPs, for instance. ESO provides a lot of more features um, that I cannot go too into detail um, today. Um, the most important for me is uh, zero configuration authentication, because of what you can do with ESO, you can uh, leverage uh, um, uh, technology like um, workload identity or AWS um, IAM roles for service accounts that basically let you use Kubernetes service account to authenticate with a core provider. So if you use a managed, um, managed Kubernetes, um, from one of the hyperscalers. Um, this is like the go-to method to use for authentication that makes it very convenient because you don't have to store any credentials in your Git repository. You just reference this account that has a specific annotation and all the other um, all the other bits are um, configured through um, um, IAC. Yeah, speaking of um, lifecycle management, um, ESO also supports secret rotation. Um, um, also, we have um, some um, fields in place that allow you to configure um, the behavior when a secret is created. So for instance, um, ESO can create a new secret for you, or if you already have a pre-existing secret, you can merge in your changes into a pre-existing secret. 
Um, also, you can control the, the behavior when when the secret was deleted on the provider side. So if it's if it has been deleted in say HashiCorp Vault, uh, then this deletion can propagate into your cluster if you desire so. Um, what you also can do is um, secret distribution across namespaces. We have our um, both uh, both custom resources, secret store and external secret, um, have like a cluster scoped uh, resource, and these allow you to um, uh, distribute secrets um, across namespaces or um, reuse uh, secret stores across different namespaces. Um, with this, with these two uh, cluster scoped. Um, uh, resources you can also do uh, cross cluster synchronization because um, Kubernetes itself can be a provider, so you can talk to a different uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster and pull in secret from that particular cluster. Um, you can also fetch multiple secrets, um, so you cannot just fetch a single one. You can just fetch all secrets that match a particular. Um, tag um, key value pair, or you can fetch all the secrets that match a specific uh, regular expression. Um, what you also can do is um, you can extract secrets from structured data. Because in HashiCorp Vault, you typically um, store a JSON blob or a JSON object, and you can pick specific fields from that JSON object, or you can even like pick uh, nested fields from, uh, from HashiCorp Vault uh, from the secret. That's also supported in other providers. Um, it just looks a little bit differently. Uh, last but not least, um, ESO was um, designed for like a multi-tenant approach um, first. So it um, offers a um, we put a lot of thought into it um, to make it work uh, work in a multi-tenant scenario. So we have like a lot of um, different options that I would like to show you in the next couple of slides. A call of deployment patterns and recipes. Only have the time to um, show two examples. Um, the first one is basically how a self-sufficient team could look like um, when using ESO. Um, let's maybe just go straight into it. Um, so here in this example at the top, we have three different AWS accounts. Um, and each team has their own AWS account and we have like different color colors there. So we have the yellow team, the green team, and the purple team. And yeah, every team has its own namespace and every team has its own AWS account. Now, an application developer um, has the responsibility to set up everything on their own, um, which might be desirable, maybe not desirable. It kind of depends on your um, on your team structure. Um, ESO supports that that a team or an application developer in this case um, can be completely self sufficient, so they can manage everything on their own. Um, in this case, an application developer would create a secret store on their own. Um, an application developer would create an external secret, um, and that would make a resource, uh, a secret resource appear in their namespace and they can consume it um, however they like. An application developer also needs to create a trust relationship between AWS Secrets Manager and um, the secret store uh, within their namespace. Um, how they do that kind of depends, I guess, or again, if you use like a managed Kubernetes, just use service accounts, this is like a no-brainer to do that and set that up. It's really, really easy. Um, yeah, so this is an example how a team can be like completely self-sufficient and they basically have no dependencies on an admin or ops team um, that manages resources for them. The only prerequisite is to have um, external secrets operator installed. Um, but this is a simple Helm install command away because um, the operator doesn't have to be configured at all, basically, um, for that use case because um, the operator doesn't run with any sorts of um, privileges like cloud provider privileges. Of course, it has to install CRDs and so on, but yeah, you, you get it. A different option would be if you have like multiple teams and you need multiple teams uh, because you have like shared resources and so on. So this is one example how that could potentially look like. Um, in that case, we have one AWS account and this uh, secret manager instance um, is used from different teams. So they basically share one instance of that secret manager. In this case, um, these prefixes are like uh, these um, secrets are prefixed with a, a particular name, and a cluster admin would have to create um, a secret store per namespace, and that secret store um, contains a specific IAM role that will be used um, or will be assumed by ESO that allows access to a particular set of secrets. So, again, all the secrets. Um, 
uh, a application developer would have access to is basically scoped to only their own uh, secrets. So an application developer from the yellowish team um, is not able to uh, pull in a secret from the from the green or the purple team. Um, the developer um, is depicted here at the bottom, and the developer wouldn't have access to um, the secret store itself. It just allows is allowed to um, create external secret resources here. So this is helpful if, if you really need that uh, separation um, of responsibilities, um, and you can solve that simply by restricting um, RBAC permissions for developers. Um, let's let's um, take a look in the future. So for the future, we plan to um, add the ability to write the secrets um, to the provider. So ESO is able to push secrets to Azure Vault or AWS Secret Manager. Um, also, by the end of the year, we want to go with GA. Um, so yeah, um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the Platform Con Slack. Um, that it will be available for a Q&A session. Um, also, um, you can free, uh, feel free and um, join the external secrets channel in the Kubernetes Slack. Um, yeah, that's a lot to say. I want to say thank you um, um, if you made it that far. And also want to say thank you to all the contributors to um, the external secrets project. And yeah, special thanks to Manitech for organizing platform porn. And yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers. <laughs>